most of us change because the pain is too great. And that's why one of the greatest things and kindest and most loving things we can do is help people feel their pain so that they can get ahead of like rock bottom type of pain before they make these changes. I think the first order of business is to like get with yourself, get a journal out, get with a wise person, meditate, one of those three best practices to get down into like, how do you feel about who you are in this world? And are you, are you overly connected by how people are going to judge you or think about you? Are you overly connected to your performance aspect? And are, listen, for so long, I propped up that I was, I was who I was because I was a grinder and because I was a hard worker and because I was smart, according to me, at least, <laughs> and because I was good at something. And it, it's a mixed feeling for me because that anxiety, it did get me good at something. Because I was outworking everybody else out of you know grounded anxiety, I'm thankful for that because I'm able to be more artistic now, and I'm really thankful that I had people in my life that kept knocking the calcium off, saying, "What the fuck are you doing? Like, is this really who you are? Like, you're going to make that choice over this choice? You're going to go and do that work rather than be with your family?" So I'm not saying this naively, and I'm not saying this out with, without scar tissue. Um, and I understand the need to get good or be good at something. I understand that. There can be a cost when it's, um, there just can be a cost now. So to your point, come full circle here, is how do we do it? Is that first order business is feel the pain that comes with maybe the anxiety that you feel when you perform. Maybe it's a general anxiety in life, even when you're not performing. Maybe it's this Con confrontation, I'm sorry, this contorting or conforming to social approvals that is kind of keeping you stuck and you know it. It's facing that up a bit and getting there before you have a full blown crisis. I'm thinking of a Super Bowl champion that said to me, Mike, I knew I was in trouble when I turned to my wife and I said to her, This is post Super Bowl, how are you going to give me the love of 100,000 screaming people? How are you possibly? going to fill that energy. How could you ever think that you're going to replace that part of my life? And he said he heard the words as it was coming out of his mouth and he thought, oh, I'm twisted. I I've lost my way. And so that's one way to think about it. Another way is that 87% of athletes in the NFL within two years are broke or divorced or both. 93 in the NBA. So so having a performance-based identity and having just the right amount of obsessiveness, anxiety, and narcissism can get you good at something. Could even get you on the world stage. Doesn't mean you're going to have it for a long time. Doesn't mean you're going to be happy. It doesn't mean it's sustainable. It is not the path of mastery. It's the path of high performance, which fall, which is like worlds apart. They look from the outside similar, but they are worlds apart. And when you listen to somebody on the path of mastery and somebody who is on the path of high performance, they don't sound the same either. So uh, how do you do it? Feel some pain, get down into some suffering, have a community of people that you know, you've invested in so much that they're going to be honest with you. And, and when you start to do some of that stuff, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. What is my purpose in life? What am I doing here? And that's a big question, John. That's a big question, AJ. Like, how do you do it? How do you know your purpose?